Hello. Um, I, uh, I am very pleased to be here. And um, I would like to give you a brief presentation about a classical pr philosophical problem of personal identity. I think it's important because all the problems we are talking about here, the um, identity crisis, all the psychological, uh, sociological issues, are in some way connected with that core uh, problem, who we are, uh, why we feel we are the same person over the time, despite all the changes th that we undergo. Um, so it will be very brief, short story of uh, philosophical uh, problem of personal identity. I, I would like just to give you some hints, some um, main figures, main problems, main paradoxes that might be inspiring. And uh, so um, uh, at the beginning, uh, I choose uh, like kind of motto of uh, this lecture, famous uh, first line of uh, Franz Kafka short story, The Metamorphosis. One morning when Gregor Samsa awoke from the troubled dreams, he found himself transformed in his bed into a horrible vermin. Uh, it's a very disturbing uh, story uh, of Kafka. And we don't know uh, how come uh, Gregor Samsa changed so much. He's kind of cockroach, and uh, it's, it's a funny thing because he feels he's the same person, despite his body uh, completely transformed. And uh, th this is kind of very drastic change uh, he uh, went through. And um, it's, um, it's um, not that we are going such drastic uh, changes in our life. But when we think about ourselves, we undergo changes all the time. Can I have next, uh, uh, next uh, ev uh, every time, every hour, every day, uh, something in us changes. Uh, our physical body, uh, the scientist says that every few years, probably seven years, uh, um, our body changed completely. It's not only that layers of our skin uh, changes all the time, our blood cells live not so long, but also our even our bone structure changed. So, so uh, our body is not the same when uh, we were little kids, when we uh, came from the hospitals with uh, our parents. Uh, so uh, body is not a good uh, answer for the question how come we feel that we are the same person through uh, all our life uh, and also when we think about our um, I don't know inner state our soul some could say our mind uh, it changed all the time we have different uh, opinions we have different feelings we feel uh, different things about uh, the same people in our surrounding. So it's, it's not that uh, we are not the same person uh, psychologically uh, when we compare it from the uh, kindergarten time, but even last year uh, I had different opinions, I feel, I feel different about a lot of things. But uh, the, the, the funny thing and um, the thing that a philosopher asks a question is um, if I have a good reason to think that I am still the same person. Uh, and there are different answers for that question. And I would like you to give uh, you some most important uh, answers and some most important questions uh, if uh, we really have good reason to feel that uh, we are uh, the same person over time. And if from uh, what experience, what grounds uh, came our sense of uh, personal identity, that we are still the same person uh, despite the changes we are the go, uh, be, because it's it's um, a kind of complex things. We uh, from 
one perspective we feel that we are the same person but uh, at the same time we are aware of the all the changes that we uh, uh, came through. And um, there is a, a classical uh, paradox from the ancient time uh, that um, uh, illustrates the problem with identity per se, not only with identity of person, not only with our identity. And it's a famous um, uh, paradox of the ships of uh, Theseus. Uh, Theseus was the uh, person, uh, famous hero uh, from the Greek uh, mythology. As you remember, he um, rescued Athenians, he uh, conquered the Minotaur, and uh, because he conquered a Minotaur in, in the labyrinth, uh, he, with the Athenian youth, uh, returned to Athens on the ship, uh, and he, he was welcomed like a hero. And um, people of Athens uh, to um, worship Theseus, uh, they keep the ship. And uh, the um, story goes like that, that they keep the ship uh, for centuries and they keep care of that ship. So they replace e each single part of that ship, even, even um, uh, planks uh, uh, and the most important uh, uh, part. And uh, the question that, uh, because we, we know that uh, story from uh, Plutarch, um, and uh, he, um, he told us that even ancient philosophers, ancient thinkers, uh, was wondering about uh, such a question. Uh, because uh, suppose that each part, each plank of that original ship of Theseus was um, replaced. It was um, replaced um, in, um, uh, in purpose to take care. It was kind of renovation, uh, that way that we care about cars, we replace some changes. And we think that uh, it's just uh, taking care of our car, uh, not uh, having a new car. Uh, but uh, um, when we think that uh, each and single uh, plank, each and, of sing and single uh, part of that ship was replaced, the question is, is it still the ship of Theseus? Uh, everything changed, uh, each part changed in, in that uh, ship. Uh, and um, uh, centuries later, later uh, Thomas Hobbes, a 17th century philosopher, uh, put that paradox even most, uh, more um, uh, um, uh, terrifying in, in a way. Suppose uh, there was a person that kept uh, all those uh, old um, parts, all those, all those uh, old uh, planks that were replaced and recreated from the, that old uh, planks ships. Which one is uh, ship of Theseus? Uh, the one that was renovated on, over the years or uh, that that was recreated from the old parts? So it's the problem of, of identity. And we, when we think uh, about ourselves, um, there are some similarities. Everything in us is replaced, changed. So, uh, how, can, uh, so how come we have such strong sense of uh, personal identity? And uh, one kind of uh, terrors that uh, explain that feeling connect that sense of identity with our body. But that um, um, case of ship of Theseus, and also um, scientific discovery that everything's in our body changing, uh, is each cell is uh, replaced, uh, make it more problematic. And uh, also we change our body, we change our hairstyle, we change, uh, we lose weight, we gain weight, uh, we go uh, some surgeries. So, so it, we don't look the same um, <laughs> even. So, so it's problematic. So some of the philosophers uh, uh, try to find the ground for our self of uh, personal identity somewhere else not in uh, our body, but uh, some in our soul, and uh, some in our uh, physical, uh, uh, psychological uh, 
life, um, especially in the consciousness. And um, uh, John Locke, uh, one of the uh, philosophers from the uh, British empirism, he proposed um, that um, we should look for ourselves um, um, self uh, strong sense that we are the same person uh, over the time uh, in our consciousness and we in our uh, memory. Um, he he didn't speak uh, of a soul, uh, as despite he, he believed in mind uh, soul, but uh, he um, he thinks that uh, it's consciousness that uh, keeps us the same person uh, over the uh, um, passing times and over the changes we undergo. And um, his uh, theory of personal ident identity uh, is very often uh, called uh, memory theory because um, consciousness for Locke was um, our uh, awareness of ourself and um, it, um, uh, it uh, uh, embraces our life through our memory. And uh, it uh, seems to be a very good theory because uh, all the things um, uh, we can remember, all the actions uh, uh, we took that we are remember, constitute our um, personal identity, our self, that we are one person. But uh, there are some problems with that uh, theory. Um, because, um, uh, you know, we don't remember everything from our life. We don't remember a um, few, I don't know, two, three years uh, of our life. Maybe we have some blur memories when we are little, very little. So uh, in that theory, uh, in our uh, personal identity, with, uh, in our sense that we are the same person over our whole life, we miss those, I don't know, two, three uh, years in the beginning. And the, another question, and it's very important um, in the light of um, new discoveries and uh, modern medicine, when we think of Alzheimer's disease and all kinds of dementia, uh, the question is uh, if we should say that the person that loses his memory, uh, memory of his action, memory of his life, uh, is, uh, is she uh, still the same person? And it's very troubling. And some, some philosophers, some thinkers say no. When, she, when the person loses uh, her, uh, her memory, she, she's not uh, the, the, the same person. And, and it's, it's a very hard uh, question. But, uh, but Locke, uh, he was convinced that it's our consciousness and it's our memory that makes are, uh, are uh, the person who we are, and it's the uh, ground for our personal identity. And he gives um, uh, the famous uh, example of uh, the prince uh, and uh, uh, the cobbler, uh, the cobbler, and um, uh, it's kind of uh, 17th century science fi fiction story. Suppose that uh, the prince and the cobbler uh, change their body, uh, the um, consciousness and uh, memories of the prince are transformed to a cobbler's uh, body. And Locke thinks that um, uh, Prince in cobbler's body is still prince if he has uh, his consciousness and uh, his memory, his memory about his life, about his actions. Uh, so, so that's uh, his view. Uh, but some uh, philosopher from um, similar time, um, uh, he came after Locke and he was kind of his uh, uh, continuator. Um, question uh, if um, there are good grounds to think um, and talk about personal identity and if there is even such thing uh, as myself. Uh, because we uh, are um, um, 
we, we usually think that there is something in us that it's solid and this is I. And uh, it, it's, it's very strange because uh, most of the people nowadays uh, don't think uh, we have souls, immortal souls, something that is really solid in us, but we still have that deep um, conviction, deep sense that there is something in us that um, is uh, me, it's, it's, it's myself. And um, uh, Hume uh, questioned that view uh, in 18th century. And he said that we, when we introspect in ourselves, we always um, find some feeling, some perception, as he said, and not, uh, not, never we found something like, like me when we introspect. And uh, there is a famous quotation from his treatise of human nature when uh, he says, for my part, when I enter most intimately into what I call myself, I always tremble uh, on some particular perception of another, uh, of heat or cold, light or shade, life of hatred, pain of pleasure. I can never coach myself at any time without a perception and can never observe anything but the perception. When my perceptions are removed for any time, as by sound sleep, so as long I am invisible to myself, uh, and uh, may truly be said not to exist. Uh, so, so Hume uh, said basically that we only find some perception like uh, cold, heat, love, uh, hate, uh, joy, sadness, but never anything like like myself. So uh, he um, he said that. Uh, myself, that sense of personal identity is a fiction and we are a bundle of perception. There is uh, no, I don't know, uh, box, um, container or, or scene uh, when the perception, uh, perception are that is solid. There are only perception and they change uh, uh, all the time. And uh, in the uh, 20th century, um, there is a um, famous there was a famous philosopher Derek Parfit. Uh, he, uh, his uh, interest was especially in uh, personal identity, and he gave some famous examples that. Um, I don't know how to say, uh, push our limit of thinking who we are and what personal identity is. Uh, in uh, 1971, he wrote the famous article, Personal Identity. And uh, in uh, 1984, he published his uh, first book, Reason and Person. And uh, in that book, uh, he gave a famous uh, example, it's a thought experiment. Thought experiments are uh, philosopher favorite uh, tools to, to um, test some our intuition and uh, pose uh, philosophical uh, problems. Um, in, and that uh, thought experiment that uh, Perfit proposed uh, suggests that maybe personal identity isn't um, something so obvious, how, uh, as we think, and maybe it's not so important as we think. Um, and uh, there is a famous um, uh, thought experiment in that uh, book uh, with um, uh, teletransportation. Uh, it's an ex example um, t uh, taken from, I don't know, science fiction movies uh, such as uh, um, Star Trek. Uh, but also in Stanisław Lem books, you can find uh, many uh, examples of uh, teletransportation. But this example is um, kind of complicated. It has uh, two main versions. In one version, um, there, uh, uh, there is a hypothetical uh, device, teletransportant, uh, that puts you uh, into the sleep records your molecular composition, breaking you down into atoms and uh, relying them to Mars. 
uh, very quickly, almost uh, at the speed of light. And uh, on Mars, another machine recreates you uh, atom by atom in exactly some uh, relative uh, position. And not only on Mars you have the same body, but also you have uh, your consciousness, your memory, you feel that you are the same person. But uh, Parfit uh, put uh, uh, that uh, question to, to our uh, minds. Uh, if uh, that uh, teletransportation is uh, a method of travel because in Star Trek it was kind of method of uh, fast traveling or we should rather say that it's a kind of, I don't know, uh, dying that uh, the person who we are on earth dies and um, there is replica of, of, of that person uh, on Mars. So it's not, not su such uh, obvious. And um, to make things even more complicated, uh, he presents us um, another version of that uh, thought ex experiment in which uh, everything goes the same, but our um, body, our uh, our self on Earth are not destroyed, they stay on Earth, but uh, the, the, uh, uh, the exact uh, uh, us are recreated on Mars. Uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, even more complicated because what we should say that our uh, two person that are us, uh, that are us and it can be that uh, the, that replicas may be in infinite numbers. So, and each of them remembers to enter uh, the tel teletransporter on Earth. And uh, what about personal identity? Which of that replica is us? It is very, very complicated. And um, uh, perfect conclusion because his aim is show us that that uh, notion of personal identity is. Um, very complicated and uh, our intuitions are uh, very often mixed and we don't know what to say, that maybe personal identity is not so important. Um, and he is very similar to Hume, uh, which, uh, who says that uh, we are just a bundle of uh, perceptions. Um, and Parfit uh, has such, um, I don't know how to say, um, I would say that it, uh, in his view, um, it's our psychological connectedness to ourselves that makes our personal identity. But uh, that personal identity in a perfect view is, has very weak sense. Um, he uh, claims that we uh, change all the time, so we cannot say uh, that we are the same person over the time, over uh, the period of our life. But um, he would say that I am very much the same person I was a week ago because there are many connections um, you, um, of my today's action, of my today's memory uh, with what uh, was going on a week ago. And uh, that time a week ago is connected with one month ago. So it's, there is some link, but it's not so solid as some uh, philosophers think. And um, uh, some would say that uh, the view that there is not such thing like a strong, solid uh, self, it's uh, terrifying. But for Parfink, it's liberating. Uh, that um, He says that um, uh, my life seems like a glass tunnel from which I was moving faster every year and at the end of which there was darkness. When I changed my view, the walls of my glass tunnel disappeared. I now live in the open air. There is still a difference between my life and the lives of other people, but the difference is less. Other people are closer. I am less concentrated about the rest of my own life and most concerns about uh, the lives of others. So, in perfect view, it's liberating and it gives us openness to uh, other people. Uh, we are not so selfish, not so concerned uh, about ourselves. And uh, there is also a very interesting proposition um, from the 20th century. 
um, about thinking of uh, personal identity. Um, those philosophers think that there is no such thing like, like soul or um, uh, consciousness uh, that through our memory makes us uh, the same person. But they say that uh, we make sense of ourselves. We feel that we are um, the same person over the years uh, because each of us tells himself kind of autobiographical tale. We make history of our life, we make kind of narrative of our life that we tell ourselves, but also we tell that story of our life to other people. We interpret uh, our life, our history and our purpose uh, in uh, some way. And that theory uh, is called narrative identity uh, theory. And it's very popular in philosophy, but also uh, in psychology, uh, it has uh, his uh, um, uh, uh, supporters. And uh, in that uh, theory, uh, interesting things that, that our stories about ourselves, our narratives about ourselves are, nev are never finite. They change us all the time. And, and it, ca it can be, be good thing because we ca can improve, we can uh, uh, retell a story, we can change. But uh, some things that is the problem because it's all up to ourselves. It's, it's, it's something, it, 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 some say it makes us uh, kind of fictional uh, figures that 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 uh, that uh, don't know really who they are, um, and that theory in philosophy uh, was made popular by uh, by philosopher Alexander McIntyre in his book um, After Virtue in 1981, and he proposed there that we should think um, about life on, uh, of individual within the, within the categories of uh, biographical tale. And later, some philosopher like uh, Paul Ricard, Charles Taylor, and even uh, from different fields, uh, Daniel Dennett um, found that view uh, interesting. They said that it's the best way to understand our sense of uh, personal identity. In short ways, uh, we uh, are making self of, our, um, uh, of ourselves by telling story. And uh, we are telling stories to ourselves mainly, but also to, to uh, other people. And uh, the last thing, um, because uh, now everybody is uh, talking about uh, chat uh, GPT and uh, artificial intelligence and also about neuroscience that uh, is discovering many, many things and uh, some uh, claim that um, uh, neuroscience will uh, find answer to the um, some classical philosophical problems and also many problems in our lives. And sad, uh, some um, advocates uh, of that view, like a Nobel Prize winner, uh, famous from um, uh, depicting uh, structure of DNA, Francis Crick, uh, he said uh, in a famous quote, you, your joys, your sorrows, your memories, and your ambitions, your sense of personal identity and free will are in fact no more than behavior of vast assembly of nerve cells and their associated molecular. So in that view, everything is our brain, in our brain, and we can, and we can locate it, we can measure, and uh, all the mystery is solved. And uh, in fact, some uh, modern neuroscience says that um, um, using uh, modern neuroimaging uh, techniques, um, uh, we can locate many mental cognitive activities in our brain. And that includes some kind of memory, a language skill, a perception, decision making, emotions, moral judgment, and aesthetic experience and motion control. But um, some philosophers and even uh, neuroscience themselves said that it's not true. Um, that, um, uh, of course, we can understand um, our psychology, we can always, uh, understand our brain, we know uh, more about uh, many diseases. 
um, but uh, it doesn't solve the mystery. And it says that even uh, neuroscience evolve and be more precise, uh, there will always be a gap because uh, between um, philosophical understanding of some problems, a humanistic understanding of some problems, and even our common sense, everyday uh, beliefs uh, about uh, um, uh, our inner life, our uh, sense of uh, ourselves, and uh, so on. Um, and um, from the Last month, uh, there was a famous story in, uh, in philosophical and um, 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 science world uh, that um, uh, on September uh, 2023, 20, uh, uh, more than uh, 100 famous philosophers like Dennett that we mentioned in uh, this lecture, and also um, very prominent uh, thinkers and uh, scientists uh, signed a letter uh, that um, says that uh, none of the <coughs> theory of consciousness uh, that is uh, presented nowadays, and especially most popular integration information theory, is not scientific. They, they said in that letter that it's all a pseudoscience, that we have no uh, scientific uh, theory of consciousness. So uh, our consciousness, we, we could say, is still mystery. Or some says we, we should um, put aside, uh, we should resign from, from the um, concept of consciousness. Uh, but as you can see, it's not, not uh, very easy. And uh, the, the last uh, thing from me, um, I, I hope that, uh, that, uh, that the brief presentation uh, gave you some, some hints and some, some thoughts uh, about uh, problems of uh, personal identity. And I, I also would like to say that it's not, um, it's not a very academic, abstract problem because it, it connects in, with our everyday decision in our, with our, our, our everyday life because um, it even has some um, um, implication uh, of uh, uh, injustice system and so on, because when we um, think that we are not the same person uh, over time, what about our obligation uh, to other people? What about vows, pro uh, per uh, promises and so on? Our society and our um, relation with people are built um, on the assumption that we are the same person. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's very pleasant, everything, and I hope that I give you some, some, some hints and some uh, questions. Thank you very much.